Steve Miller went from Phoenix, Arizona, all the way to Tacoma, Philadelphia, Atlanta, and even L.A. Jimmy Buffett says people living in different latitudes actually have different attitudes. Kenny Chesney wants you to believe that an island in the sun is where you want to be. And then Johnny Cash reminded us all that he's been everywhere, man. They'd all have you believe that other places and people are nothing but sunshine and roses like a friggin' AAA travel brochure. The reality is travel sucks and anywhere but home is awful. Unless you're Fran, then home is awful too. Going to an unfamiliar place is stressful and uncomfortable, and people suck no matter where you are. Two other artists who coincidentally fit into our personal musical tastes a little better have a more realistic description of society and our general feelings about it. Maynard James Keenan said, It's a bullshit three-ring circus sideshow of freaks, and the only way to fix it is to flush it all away. However poetic that lyric is, I think Phil Anselmo said it best with his opening lyric from Hole in the Sky, Fuck the world. Now, maestro, hit my goddamn music. Welcome back to Needless to Say. I'm here with the only two reasons Alabama is considering rescinding its abortion law. (laughs) Otherwise known as Craig and Dave. How are we, boys? Good, good. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. I'm happy I'm not in utero anymore. Yeah. So's your mother. (laughs) That poor woman. (laughs) <laughs> Even for a tumor, you'd be large. <laughs> I know Ripley's Believe It or Not is back on the air, but let's not push it. Dave. I swear to God, if Bruce Campbell calls me, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. Oh, uh, Craig, how was your week, brother? Uh, not too bad. It was just, you know, for a long time, I always talked about work stuff. You know what I mean? And the same thing this week. My weeks are pretty simple. But I saw something it's at work. very fitting. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw something this week I haven't seen in a long time. We were doing a job on it. It was a new construction. A lot of the And a lot of the other contractors that I work with are guys that I've worked with for... 20 years so there's not many new guys coming in you know okay you know okay. occasionally you get one but so well, one of the electrician companies that we work with i'm not gonna say their name the electrician comes in he's got a new guy with him young kid and he was probably like 18 just starting out and he, you know he was working the kid he wasn't lazy he wasn't but he was fucking this guy was fucking railing him for everything he did was just like, what are you fucking stupid? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit. I don't, you know, and I could see the kid was getting frustrated, but he kept fighting through it. And I was okay. like, good for him because he's sticking with it. He's sticking with it. And he wasn't, like I said, he wasn't lazy. He was, he was going through it. And I thought, you know, there's a lot of rookies in the construction industry now. There's actually fewer. I know people that are having a hard time finding people. Yeah. Because nobody wants to do this type of work. Well, everybody's thanks they, to their parents, yeah. everybody's a doctor or a lawyer. They just yeah. haven't discovered their, yeah. their true strength and, yet. Yes, exactly. I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. It's not just that industry. No. It's not like I see it in my industry. Yeah. They come in feeling they should have been hired as my boss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's the thing. And... So I watched this kid take it. I could tell he was getting frustrated. And he was getting yelled at for shit that he wasn't doing wrong. But <laughs> you're just going to yell at him anyway. You know? And But that's the way it goes. And I had a little... Like, I, I wanted to say shit to him. You know? Like, tell, like I wanted to talk to him. But I did. I'm not going to get involved. You know? So I'll do it here for any rookies that are getting involved. <laughs> are we going to get advice column now? Yeah. Yeah. The show just wow. gets deeper. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, right? When you start working in a construction, in a trade, and the guy that's teaching you, yeah, he may not have went to college. He may not even finished high school, but he's been doing it for 30 years. And if he's telling you you're doing something and you're you're stupid, 
It's because you are. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The I don't give crustier, a crustier the better. Yeah. I don't give a shit what trade school you went to because there's trade schools now. You know, there's all this shit now. Um, it doesn't matter because the trade school doesn't teach you about the fact that the plumbers didn't show up yesterday. Right. And the the you know their spaces aren't marked out for for shit. You have to like, hey, these guys weren't here yesterday. They, I know they're putting the sink here. I know they're you doing. You need to this. understand you need where to they're start doing their what's, stuff. You need to see what's going on. So, you know that you don't know what's going on. I don't give a shit who your professor was. Yeah. Because if he's a professor in a trade school. He's not that fucking good. No. Because <laughs> he'll make a hell of a lot more money in the trade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's the other thing, too, is a lot of people that don't think there's money in trades. You way can make, wrong. Well, way wrong. That's where they're going now. Where it's actually a trend that we watch with the work that I do is that Generation Z, who are basically in their 20s, early 20s. Yeah. These guys actually are understanding now that they're better off going to a two-year trade school than they are going to a four-year college because the millennials, all they bitch about is their fucking debt. Debt, yes. For the record, Generation X also have debt. Yeah. yeah. Lots Wait, of it. You use past tense. I'm still working on mine. Yeah, well, I know because yeah. Clemson overcharges you for a, a, a really <laughs> shitty education. <laughs> well, they're going to pay for that crappy-ass football team. I went before. I, I went when they were still a crappy ass football team. Yeah, I know. You, yeah. you you go now. At least they give you a national championship. Yeah, I yeah. have I have sports disappointment, but degree pleasure. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but where they're leaning now to get back on your point, they really are going to two year trade schools, and they're starting to learn back in the field. Everything comes full circle. Mm -hmm. Generation yeah. Z is actually getting it. You know what? What people don't realize, right, is you you go into this trade. Things are a lot easier in trade now too. The tools. The, um, even bringing shit into the house. I'm watching these guys. They, they got these truck, these hand trucks that go upstairs and shit. I'm like, <laughs> get the what you fucking? I you carried that shit up the fucking stairs forever. You know, yeah, Craig's but, dropping his coffee because his carpal tunnel has arthritis. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And even that, like, I'm watching. And roofing is a fucking brutal job, no matter Fuck, how you look at it. Roofing is a young man's but job. But I'm watching these guys roofing. They've got these lifts now that attach to the ladders. So, dude, there's no kid. They just send bundles up. They're sending uh, yeah. like two bundles at a time up to All the right, fucking but, guy in the roof. By the way, right. you've got your notes for this episode, not off a sheet of paper. Definitely not off something you printed. You got it off a phone. Okay, so you're telling me that them having technology and improving something, an existing system, no, is a bad thing? No, no. What I'm saying is it's the trades are. are they're not easier. It's, you still have to do the work. You're mocking them, but, though, for having no, a, a, a ladder that works better. I'm not mocking them. I'm not mocking. What I'm saying is people don't want to get in trades because they think, oh, I'm not going to be a grunt. I'm not gonna. It's gotten so much better. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. What, you My know what fault, I mean? then. I missed no, your that, point. That's what I was saying. It's All gotten right. so much better. Then me, Maybe I need like, to start listening. Yeah, it's not yeah. just swinging a hammer and throwing bricks anymore. Yeah, it's a lot different. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can frame a house with... Pneumatic hammers and and you know I but mean you that's still been going on for to years. Frame a house. But you still need to know how to frame a house. Well, the skill's still there. Right? Yeah, they've just the made the tools. Yes. Made it. Okay, yes. Craig, I'm yep. I'm offering the one and only on air apology I'll ever do. Mm? I apologize for not listening closely. Yeah. Okay, but honestly, you're droning on and on, so get the fuck to it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my thing you is, you know, he's going to edit that apology into every episode. After yeah, this, exactly. Right? <laughs> that that's going to be its own file. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Craig, yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, my thing is, you know, I'm looking at this. I could see he was getting frustrated. I was glad he stuck with it because he was just he was he was screwing in an outlet plate, and it wasn't taking him long. But the guy's yelling at him like, "Dude, come on! I, like, hurry the fuck up!" And I get it. And the thing is, it's not that he was taking long; it was painful to fucking watch. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. This is guy has been fucking doing these things for 30 something years. Watching you fumble with the fucking screwdriver. <laughs> Not that you're taking any longer, but you're fumbling with the screwdriver and you're fucking doing this thing. And he's like, dude, just put the fucking thing on already. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it is. It's painful to watch. And you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, bottom line. And the other thing is, 
the, there is no HR department. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. If the guy calls you a stupid cocksucker, you can't report it to anybody. <laughs> you know, and that's it. Yeah, Deal with you, it. You can, but you'll be a stupid cocksucker without a job. Without a job, <laughs> exactly. But the and thing with is, somebody else calling you a stupid mm-hmm. cocksucker for reporting it and then losing your job. But those, that's right. and a lot of times, granted, there are assholes out there that are just assholes. But there, well, yeah. there are guys out there that most of the time, those are the guys you're going to learn the most from. They're busting your balls. They're busting your balls because they want you to do the job. They want to get it done right, and they want to leave. Yeah. And that's going to be your goal soon. You know? Yeah. <laughs> because you're going to make the same amount of money if you do it in less time. <laughs> you know, yeah, and at, a, at some point, if you're if you're you know, working with some, some greenhorn that starts, your, it, your money depends on how quickly they work. Are, yes, exactly. Uh, you, you need to understand that dynamic. I, had I a kid, totally get that. I had a kid, this was going back about, this is probably about 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. I had this kid, I hired this kid, Chris. Great kid. Loved him. He was hilarious. But he was a good kid. He was work, When he got to work, he worked. He didn't slack. So I busted his balls one day to a point where we were on a job in Providence, Rhode Island. And we li- he lives in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Which is probably about twenty something miles from Providence, and there's no direct way to there's get no there. There's no direct way to get there, <laughs> and I'm busting his balls, and then all of a sudden I realize he's gone. <laughs> he just left. Oh shit! Yeah, and he I was like, walked was off that? the job, and I was like, was I that bad? And even I'm like talking to the other guy I'm working with. He's like, I didn't think you were that bad, you know? Like what the fuck? So I was like, okay, I felt like a dick. So I was like, let me give him a day to cool off. I'll give him a call tomorrow. Sure. I get a call in the morning from First him. Thing? First thing. Okay. And he says, I'm sorry I left yesterday. I got upset at what you said. But then when I finally got home, because he ended up calling one of his buddies. <laughs> finally like got fucking home. Hours, he got two home, hours ago. He got home way after I did. <laughs> 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 he, <laughs> he calls me and he apologizes. He goes, when I got home, I told my dad what you said. And he bust out laughing. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. He told his he fucking went ratted me out to his dad, and his dad just fucking laughed at him like that was fucking great. <laughs> like, <laughs> Andy's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, um, I you know I get it if you don't want me to. I said I'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Done. You, you know go. what I mean? I gave I gave him time to cool off. I understood that he got upset. I I've been there. I've been there. And he had to understand. This is what this job's about. Yep. You yeah. gotta earn it. Yeah, exactly. But most kids today are not used to tough love because we've been told that they're great at everything and, and nobody can talk to you this way and all that. Now, uh, should somebody tell you you're a complete fuck up? No, that, I mean, that's an HR no. problem across the board. Yeah. Okay. And I never did that. No, you know but what if, I mean? if but someone tells you that, there <clears throat> may be some truth to it. There may be. Th- you know no, what that's saying? what I'm like, saying. No, you're wrong. Yeah. All right. So can we move into the white collar segment yeah, of the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Dave, how was your week? Wow, you picked me to go white collar. All right. Uh, well, my okay, week. Can we can we go like off white collar? You're going to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all that sweat and shit. Yeah. So yeah, I spent my week in Texas. It was eggshell. It was. It was. It's very white in Texas. Um, oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I spent my week down there for work. Now. I learned a few things. I, 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 I met up with our friend Matt. Matt, who moved to Texas, he spent some time with us in the winter, I think. I'll get to that in a minute. But in my travels, I learned some things about people. I don't know if I learned them, but it kind of, they became a little more apparent to me. Yep. People are fucking dirtbags when you travel. So I learned, it occurred to me when I was in a, an airport, I think I was in Dulles in D.C., that when people travel, they turn into like Chinese refugees and just like shit the gutters. <laughs> <laughs> they're Bart- a- bartering for rice. Yeah. What? Right. Jumping off cliffs with their babies? Yeah. <laughs> I-, I swear to God. <laughs> people are just degenerate assholes when they travel. Yeah. I'm walking off of planes, they're just piles of trash under seats. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Brad's dying. I think we Hold killed on. Brad. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine everybody in Dulles <laughs> <laughs> launching themselves. <laughs> Pile of babies next to baggage claims. <laughs> They're not going home. They're not going home. They're not going home. <laughs> you go now. <laughs> Look what happened to Marv. <laughs> <laughs> I never 
envisioned this conversation going here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Go on. I went to Texas and people are throwing babies off the cliff. I don't... <laughs> and we got a call back tomorrow. <laughs> That's just why I love you guys. So, so aside from the travel part in the airport, right, <laughs> I spent... <laughs> I spent a week in a large corporate office. It's it, it's the, my company refers to it as a campus, and it is. Oh Jesus it's Christ! Two it's like towers. A cult. Like we have our own seven level parking garage attached to this facility, right? Damn. It's it's a it's an amazing place, right? Office. However, I'm there all day and out of my comfort zone. I get to drop bombs in this office I don't go to. Yeah. So I don't have my own favorite spot to go to. I haven't been here before. You know, if you go to the same place, you like you have a favorite bathroom or even stall. <laughs> we knew this. It was gonna Listen, go here. So before you before you jump in, <laughs> the term "drop bombs" kind of yeah, let us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, just I want Brad's brother to know that this is not a story about me shitting myself. <laughs> it is a shitting story, however. <laughs> All right. All right. So, I think he's in either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's finally He's just he's just happy you pulled your pants down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> I won't lie, Florida has not been kind to him. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, brother. Kidding. Yeah, meanwhile, he's at home like, shut up, let him tell the pants story. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so it occurs to me while I'm taking my shit break that <laughs> My There's the, there are three three distinct groups of people when it comes to shitting in public, and I I, I use military terms to describe it. it. It happened while I'm sitting in the stall. I'm like, I got it, right? You so were there for three hours. You're well, upset. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's probably saying it out loud. I got it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. everybody in the other stalls are like, what the fuck is this guy talking this is about? a light bulb above the yeah. stall. Like, <laughs> they got a cowbell like a bar like I just got tipped. Ding, ding. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I liken it to two segments of the military. They're, we're talking about people shitting in public. There's three groups that I come up with. The first group is the artillery. They will just fire away regardless of who's around. Yeah. Don't care. The door's opening, closing, people washing their hands. They are just firing away, taking shots, doesn't matter. Right. Then there are the people that are the snipers. <laughs> they wait for someone else to cough or make a noise to shoot one out. <laughs> they try to muffle the sound with some other sound that happens naturally. So they might be in the stall for a few extra minutes, right? And then the last group that I could come up with is the special forces. <laughs> These are the people you know they're in the stall, but you don't know if they're shitting, shat, or waiting to shit. Because there's no sound, nothing. They have to be perfectly alone to take a dump. So the special forces that you don't know they're there, you don't know what's happening, but they've been yeah. in and out at some point. So that's what yeah. I've discerned from from going to this huge office. These three groups of public shitters. I, I'm gonna place you in paratroopers because you yeah. just drop in when <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> no, if I'm if I'm in a room, I would be retreating because I have yeah. to run away. I think yeah. he's reconnaissance because yeah. he <laughs> took hours to write notes. Nope, there's still pants there. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you could read these jokes on the left stall in the seventh floor in Plano, uh, Texas of our office, yes. Plano. I just think it's great, it's though. The, that they David, make the best tackle boxes. They don't make shit in Plano. <laughs> Dave was there for five days, though, and Dave did nine minutes of work. <laughs> <laughs> Seven of it's for the show. Yeah. <laughs> but, but an extensive breakdown of what it's like to shit in an insurance company's <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> With a random shout out to my brother on yeah. top of it. <laughs> hey, I know he was concerned. And yes, I do shit myself that often. I'm with you. I do appreciate, though, <laughs> I like the snipers because, especially if you're in a restroom that has one of those, like, hand dryers, but, like, one of those, <laughs> oh. those new ones. That, yeah, you know, they sound like, like jet engines. Yeah, you, you do that, and then you, that's when you go, you unload. Yep. Like, you empty the magazine. <laughs> like, right there. Yeah, like two clips, easy. Yeah, <laughs> two clips. you get that thing in because it it sits there and like you, you pull your hands, in, your hands are dry. Yeah, like one of those air blades or whatever those things are. Yeah, they keep going long after, and that's when you you like opportunity and you're sitting that's there it. victory. You're literally arms in the air. You're like Blaine from Predator. You just fucking unload it. Yeah. <laughs> 
predator. It's a funny choice of words coming from a guy who hung out in a men's room as long as you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had something snappy. I got nothing. <laughs> but I got to say the most interesting part of my week, I, I mentioned before, I get to see our buddy Matt, who's, who's moved down there. Yes. And he and I went out. Um, his soon-to-be wife uh, and, and kids met us out for dinner, and then he went back home. Matt and I hung out, went to the bar, had a few drinks. He drove me back to my hotel. And you got there in 3.2 seconds? We got there before we left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're so younger when you get there. Yeah, it's yeah, fucked right. up. So, um, now, Matt is a gearhead, likes his cars. Yes. Likes to show us that he likes his cars. Now, he's got... Uh, he's got a little like two door or whatever the fuck it is. I don't, he's crammed two car seats in the back. I think they're just bolted to the frame of the car. <laughs> but we got we traveled about nine miles in six minutes <clears throat> on back roads. <laughs> we didn't get on the highways, he, but it's insane. Now he drives in Texas. They have a lot of uh, frontage roads. They call them. They're, they're basically roads that parallel each side of the highway. And that's how you kind of get to certain areas. And I'm staying at a hotel in a, a, a kind of a, a commercial area. So only, only white people can go on those, Pretty much, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the a... dirt roads are for the other folks. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so we're driving down this frontage road, and it's, it's to get to the hotel in the little corporate park it was in. It's not quite an exit, but it's this big turnoff. From the time we turned onto this road to... The turnoff, it's probably a quarter of a mile. I think we hit 83 miles an hour. <laughs> we were five miles an hour away from going back to 1955, if you're paying attention. <laughs> so well, as we're Matt coming up would have it, invented rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as we're coming up, I'm like, dude, here's the turn. So he fucking downshifts, hits the wheel, hits the brakes, but not soon enough. He puts his car into a curb Does- in the island and... <laughs> We hit it. We bounce to the other side of the, the entrance, and I hear on the outside of the car, ting, 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 ting. Things and falling it's, off. It's his fucking hubcap in 38 pieces in the entrance to the, to the hotel. Now, we're, <laughs> we're driving through the parking lot. He's turned all the way left, but we're driving straight. <laughs> we, so we get to the hotel. We're both a little tipsy. We have to <laughs> fucking change his tire, put, a, put the spare on his car. Lift it up, and he's looking at the frame. He's like, yeah, I got some work. The next day, he texts me. He's like, hey, um, Kay and I are coming up in a few weeks. Can we stay with you guys for a few nights? I'm, of course you can. What's yeah, going on? Yeah. You guys, do, are the kids going to stay with you? Was just, he's like, no, just the two of us. He's like, I kind of spent our hotel money. I said, <laughs> I said, what did you spend it on? He goes, well, remember that tire we changed last night? I said, yeah. He goes, well, that was a $1,300 mistake. <laughs> Holy he shit. bent the fucking rods holding the wheel on. Oh my god! Yeah, Thirteen hundred bucks. So because Matt drove me home from the bar, he now has to sleep at my house for four days. <laughs> now I've joined uh, at Dave's win win. Yeah, at Dave's bachelor party. <laughs> Matt drove. Now there was six of us yes. stuffed into that tiny car. That car, same car. And tiny, tiny. Six of us. Was that Mazda that he talked about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the one. And he. Is driving and weaving. It was like Tron. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I'm like Jesus. Almost. <laughs> almost. Yeah, you almost got me. <laughs> oh, so I close. felt the bubbles going up yeah. the nostrils. <laughs> so fucking close. Damn. <laughs> Oh. But it was. It was fucking. The G forces were fucking insane. I thought people were going to pass out in the fucking car. I was like Actually, fucking nervous. Like I was scared. I pissed sideways. Yeah. I just love that it. G forces from a guy who only knows A through F. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Can't wait to see you, buddy. <laughs> right? Oh, by the way, I'll Uber. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no so... need to hit a median on my account. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first night I was there. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it only got better from yeah, there, right? Did. Yep. Oh, yeah, so, shit. So that was pretty much my week in Texas and, and summarizes almost every night I've hung out with Matt. Yeah. There's some issue, not issue with the car, but it, it all comes back to his driving... 
or, or something along those lines. When he was following us to Maine, I'm like, where? I'm looking in my rearview mirror. I'm like, where is he? And then we get to the, the one place that we agreed we'd all stop. And we get there. And he's like, I've been here for a half hour. Yeah. I'm like, how'd you do that? He's already gassed up, eaten, and shaved. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. This guy talks at the speed of evolution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but somehow drives like all his energies in his yeah. right foot. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Let me tell you something. Jason Statham and The Rock have nothing on this fucking no. thing. <laughs> Granted, he almost fucking Paul walked into the fucking thing. But, <laughs> but I would love to see Matt roll in between Paul Walker and Vin Diesel in that movie. <laughs> Big ceremonious drive yeah. off at the end. He's like, hey, what's up? Just takes their pink slips out of their hands and takes off. <laughs> Uh, the fast and the bike curious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I can't wait to see you, Matt. You're going to come at me with the slowest punch in the yeah. history. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so, that was my week. Yeah, I'd say Brad. so. Brad, how was your week, my friend? No, I'm not following that. No? no. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Uh, we sent my dad off real good. Uh, I, I wanted to raise a glass again. I'm not changing the mood tonight. I'm not doing no. any of that. But no. I want to thank you all again for allowing me a moment of catharsis last week. Of course. I appreciate not only from you guys, but also for all the listeners. A lot of them reached yes. out. Yeah. They a, did. A lot of people, uh, even people we haven't met yet, uh, reached out get, and said yeah. some nice things. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, we sent them off right, and we're going to do a memorial later on uh, next month. Nice. Right around his birthday. So that's good. Uh, the best part is dad's coming home. Yep. There you go. He's coming up from Florida. Florida was never home. Yeah. We, You know, I, like I need to tell anybody we're New Yorkers. But, yeah, they, we're, we're going to do it there, and it's going to be good. Uh, the one thing is I didn't get a Father's Day, so this weekend I decided to treat myself to one thing. <laughs> And, and it's was... called a bug assault. <laughs> and it's literally a gun that uses table salt to kill insects. That is fucking fantastic, dude. It is fantastic. I honestly, though, I thought this thing shot salt from like 18 feet out. It doesn't. Like, it comes with a laser scope. And Come on. It does. It does. You pay nine bucks extra, but it's totally worth well, it. No, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell but yeah. you got to basically shotgun this thing. It's like playing Doom. You got to like, like get right up on this thing. Yeah. But so you have to go next to a hornet's nest and just launch salt crystals. In. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go online and look for this thing, there's videos of guys who are like, "Yeah, I'm sitting there, I loaded up fresh, fresh magazine of Morton's, <laughs> <laughs> and you fill the magazine with salt crystals." And the, the one I got was called the Black Fly Edition, <laughs> and it's got a more concentrated. Spray. It's got a tighter group. It does. Yeah, yeah. It does. Oh you can God. take out bigger insects quicker. <laughs> but I mean, they got videos of people killing scorpions with this what? thing. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. But I really thought I was going to sit in my chair and like snipe a mosquito from 30 yards out. It's not happening. But I, I'm going to go pretty fucking hog wild. I'll see you guys in the fall. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> what was great was uh, on Father's Day, Brad gets a phone call from his daughter. <laughs> and I'm she's in Florida. Like, at this he's point. A, he's yeah. in, Brad's in Florida, and she's like, "Hey, Dad, Happy Father's Day!" Blah blah. blah. Say hi to Craig. <laughs> I'm like, "Hey, Brad." Brad's like, "Hey, hey, what the fuck are you doing in my house?" <laughs> this is not the kind of quite, you know. <laughs> Dad leaves town, and then Craig appears. Yeah. yeah. It's not the most comforting no. thing in the world. <laughs> Melissa gets on the phone. We need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> I Craig's re- fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really no. I really wanted to do this more gently. Yeah. yeah. And not when you're down in Florida morning. <laughs> but yeah. Craig's nah. here and it's and he's staying. Yeah. You should I'm also know that daddy now, kids. Yeah. Yep. You should also know that Fran's okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> And again, in, in Craig's household, win-win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody goes where they belong. But no, it was uh, it was pretty crazy to get a Father's Day call that involved Craig. Yeah. 
But all in all, I appreciate what happened. My wife decided to go out and get pink eye. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've Every anal sex joke, every anal problem <laughs> joke, every anal anything joke we've ever made on this show involves pink eye as a punchline. <laughs> then my wife goes out and gets it. Not from bad. that. Not from that. No. It was and it was bad. She called me in the morning. I got a, I, well, I got a message in the morning. And all it was was, hey, I need to go to the I need to go to the walk in. My you know, I it was bad. And she just said, I hate to ask you, I know it's Father's Day, but can you come and watch your kids for a few minutes so I can go, you know, to the walk in. And yeah. Craig with no children said, Sure. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I know I'm not I'm not a dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, fuck I'm, this, it's Father's yeah. Day. I'm gonna sit home and and nothing. Yeah. No, so I was like, yeah, no problem. Because I wasn't going to meet my, my in-laws or anything until later. And I wasn't going to go see my dad until later. So I said, yeah, no problem. So I came here. And it was just great. Because as soon as Melissa left, she's... So yeah, I was like, I'm going to call my dad. And was, I'm like, yes, do that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was like, I was like, this is going to be perfect. <laughs> Where's my recording equipment when yeah. I need it? My whole family was in the yeah. dining room of this house in Florida, and it's just one big open concept floor plan. Uh-huh. And it's so, you know, we're all like, it's we're sad, and we're telling stories about my dad, and we're doing all this, and then I get a call, and I'm like, oh, my kids are wishing me a happy Father's Day. That's great. Say hi to Craig. <laughs> yeah. Ruined. And so I, I, I immediately take him off speaker. What are you doing in my yeah. house? <laughs> Like, we all oh, love each other on Friday nights and when we record on Saturdays, but I don't need to hear from him on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on Father's Day. <laughs> like, oh, nothing. It's Father's Day. I got some new kids. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, you ready to be a stepfather? Yeah. <laughs> At that point, when he said he was taking my kids, I was just like, good. <laughs> I was like, I was Best like, Father's hey, Day gift ever. Ever. Get used to talking to him on weekends. <laughs> <laughs> I got pictures of Craig's neck thing. I'm shooting with a salt gun. <laughs> that salt thing sees it twice as much as you do. Right? <laughs> I don't have that. But anyway, uh, so good week in review, boys. Yeah. Let's uh, take a moment. We got a little bit of advertising to do. A little bit. I, yeah, we do. I, I'd like to throw out an, uh, a quick shout out to Chuck and Brad. And uh, you know what? I'm going to let them do it from here. Yep. Hey, Rhode Island and Connecticut, I'm Chuck Staten from the Chuck and Brad podcast. And before you go see the new movie Spider-Man Far From Home, come see a very special pop culture based comedy show called Spider-Man Bradley Drawn featuring Chuck and Brad. The quick description is comedians Brad Rohr and Chuck Staten present a poorly drawn and badly written retelling of the original Spider-Man movie starring Tobey Maguire. Brad is a terrible artist. And we're going to use his drawings and my new narration of the film based on those drawings to tell the story live on stage. It's going to be an awesome time. We're doing it Thursday, June 27th at the CT Comedy Theater in Hartford, Connecticut with Katie Arroyo, Laura Manasiewicz, and BJ Quiggin. And we're doing it Sunday, June 30th at the Comedy Connection with Impractical Jokers tour opener Jiggy, Ray Harrington, and Alan Fitzgerald. That's Spider-Man, Bradley Drawn. Come on out. It's going to be a great time. All info at chuckandbradpodcast.com. All right. We are back. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to the Chuck and Brad show. That's going to be a good time. No, it's going to be a good It's going to be a real good time. Because, you know, if they did that much justice to Back to the Future, God only knows what they can do with a cinema verite like Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be with good. With Tobey Maguire. But anyway, so we got some headlines this week. Uh, the headlines that we're doing are not really new. Because we covered this last week, but how do we not talk about this again? Last week, we mentioned that the Dominican Republic was having a problem keeping people alive. And we thought, hey, weird coincidence. You know what? Go on your beach vacation. Maybe you skip the margarita. Yeah. No. Think bad things are happening in the Dominican it's Republic. Yeah. I'll take my, my mat ride home over this. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I'm yeah. pretty sure the drinks down there will also bend your axle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would do a point with that. Um, was it the week before last? There was a flight that left the Dominican Republic, and there was a person on the flight that said everybody on the plane was sick. Unreal. Everybody on the plane was was ill. Yeah, it it, it caused havoc on the flight because people, are, you know, there's only two toilets and they're the size of the yeah. mug I'm drinking out of. It, yeah, 
exactly. Did you ever try to piss in the trunk of a car <laughs> while it's driving? <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, I mean, we, we, we're talking about this. We mentioned it a week or two ago. Yeah, we did. Yeah, but it's still it's still happening. happening. It's still a continuing story. So normally to, it's one and done with us to a point that the the Dominican Republic did a press conference. Yeah, <laughs> like. We're sorry all your citizens are dying when they come here to visit us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Their most famous citizen, David Ortiz, was accidentally shot, shot in, in his own ba- bar. Yeah. That's not a bigger story That's than this. That's not a bigger story than this because people are they're poisoning people. Yeah. Left and right. As my son would say, it's not, by purpose. It's not going to yes. It's not it's not going to uh Mexico. <laughs> It's not going to Mexico and getting Montezuma's revenge. Yeah, like you know you when you go there, water. don't drink the water. Yeah, don't drink the water, and you you know you might you might get a, you know a little sick. This is killing people. This is people drinking bottled liquor. Yeah, right. This is a different situation. They're not just opening the tap to get a drink of water in the middle of the night. These folks are drinking bottled booze. Yeah, the thing is, they're not saying like, "Hey, don't you know like don't come here." <laughs> They're like, come on in. Yeah. And Hard Rock Cafe, where a lot of people have died at the Hard Rock Cafe there. Sure. Hard Rock Cafe is everywhere. Yeah. Right? No. Right, right. But they're buying locally. But they're buying locally. Obviously, because, yeah. well, what the fuck? In the well, Dominican But it's Republic. not just the Hard Rock Cafe. It's happened in a couple of other places, but most of it is directed yeah, out of the Hard Rock hard Cafe. Rock. And I'm going to say it's their shitty food. <laughs> right there, hundred percent. Yeah, the Guisiamo burgers. Yeah, shit. yeah. That's a piece of shit. Everybody's getting sick from fucking Steven Tyler's fucking sweatshirt. It's hanging in the lobby. It's just fucking. It's gonna. It's gonna start the. It's gonna start the fucking next zombie apocalypse. This tasseled fucking leather jacket that's fucking hanging in there. It's getting everybody sick. Scabies burgers they're selling. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Scabies. <laughs> oh, shit. The Led Zeppelin fish up the pussy burger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Marianne Faithful. <laughs> oh, jeez. I kind of like Scabies burger. I'd order that. Like, Just because it comes with a side of What's this drink called? <laughs> What's this drink called? The Tom Petty. Yeah. <laughs> Have one. Have one. Have yourself a free fallen. Yeah. <laughs> we call this one the last dance. <laughs> but now there's like a troop of fucking Girl Scouts going. I don't so, know if they're going or, anymore. Or they're, uh, uh, probably not. They got all ballsy last week. Yeah, they're yeah. like, we're but still going because we're, we're Girl going. Scouts and we got Samoas to spread the world around. <laughs> and then now nine other people have died. I'm, I'm thinking the Girl Scouts are probably yep. taking their fucking trefoils and bringing them back. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably going to get away with it if they're bringing Thin Mints. <laughs> That'll kill them. You know? The peanut butter patties. Yeah. Oh, no. The, fuck the yeah. Samoas, which I learned in certain regions of this country, including the one we live in, are called Caramel Delights. Yeah, yeah. Caramel Delights. Okay, yeah. because apparently there's a huge Samoan population here in Portuguese New England <laughs> that is offended by the term Samoas. <laughs> See, we call it, we made them a little thinner and a little wider and called them Caramel Delights, but we all know what's going on here. <laughs> Those cookies are all related to the rock. We all know. <laughs> They're all fat with shot tooth necklaces. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they should just change it to the Moanas. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> Fucking coconut, caramel, and chocolate. It's a delightful cookie. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the rock? Coconut, caramel, and chocolate? That's right. And delightful. <laughs> and delightful. <laughs> That's He's him. a wonderful guy to be that's, around. That's what his ancestry DNA yeah. profile says. <laughs> Picture that fucking cookie. The Rock, yeah. He's yeah. coconut, caramel, shortbread cookie, sugar and spice, yeah. and everything nice. Yeah. His ancestry profile is a pie chart of that fucking cookie. Yeah. <laughs> and then just a touch of Sam Jackson. <laughs> oh, shit. For flavor. <laughs> We're talking about the Dominican Republic, right? Yeah. I'm not sure anymore. 
No. Yeah, well, hey, the yeah, Girl Scouts got involved and everything got fucked yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> this is what every Boy Scout feared. <laughs> <laughs> that and their Boy Scout troop leader. <laughs> What's the next headline? <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Well, you know, it's funny. We buried the lead here. Yeah. We did. If yeah, we kind of We got did. caught up in headlines. Maybe we'll rework the headlines to come after this, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, when you were talking of all those songs that you were quoting and all those things you were mentioning in the in the intro. Yeah. Okay. We were kind of talking about vacations because we're in here now. It's officially the second day of summer. Yeah. We yeah. were going. You and I were both traveling this last week, which kind of spawned. The direction yeah. we went today is... And is, maybe we didn't travel for the reasons we wanted to, but we definitely got to see a bunch of people who were. Yes. All right. And so we are in the heart of vacation season. You guys choose the vacation in my garage. That's fine. I'm good with that. <laughs> but... I have three kids at home. Vacation it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> About a year and a half ago, we used to... I live with Fran. <laughs> it's a vacation. So she's on vacation? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every three hours a week. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to Dominican Republic. We're not going to the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> Nobody is, apparently. Yeah, I mean, clearly these are some of the worst vacations imaginable. I got to ask, you know, let's let's get off topic for a minute. Well, not off topic, but let's get off the fucking yeah. headlines. All right. What are some of the best and worst vacations we've ever had? I mean, I know we've covered this before, but I got to ask you guys, like, what are some of the best and worst? Dave, go first. All right, I'll... Yeah, I was going to say, I'll go first, and I'll I'll actually go with the best, so we can kind of change the vibe a little bit. One of the first things that I thought of was the last company I worked for. (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck? I haven't told my story yet. Yeah, I would assume there would have been your wedding (laughs) with your wife vacation. (sighs) Yeah, you fucked up. All right, so next week I'll talk about my my divorce vacation. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, she's going to send me the Dominican Republic yeah. immediately <laughs> with an unlimited liquor pass. <laughs> Via the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. I booked you a cruise the from, dead zone. from Louisiana yeah. to Dominican. I booked you a kayaking trip through the dead zone. <laughs> the, only, the only this one way cruise that they for. sell. That's fucking fantastic. This company I worked for, I'm thinking... Two years ago, he went on a vacation with my cousin when they got married. Like, <laughs> like that was their that was their wedding was the vacation. Like, no, not that one. It go was ahead, go on. It was three and a half yeah. years ago. Oh, three and a, wow, it was that long April ago? April of sixteen. Yeah, that's, that's, wow. I was going to say that company better be called Wedded Bliss <laughs> Industries. <laughs> But go on. Tell us about your favorite vacation, Dave. <laughs> That's not what Brad said. He said some of the best. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I'm not recovering from this. Yeah. Fuck it. I was going to go with it. So, I'm just glad he didn't say Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been. I know. No. That's cool. <laughs> so, so anyway, I mentioned my vacation with my wife before. But one of the, fir- one of the first things I, I thought about was... When I was working for this other company years ago, I transitioned job roles there, and I started traveling a lot. And yep. And my, Ryan was there? My, no. <laughs> <laughs> and neither were my kids, for that matter, you <laughs> peg. But they all bought you shot glasses wherever yeah. they were. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that time we were in Disney World without your kids. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Dick. Uh, go on. <laughs> As you were. Oh, God, I hate this show and love it at the same time. <laughs> oh, fuck. So anyway, <laughs> so I was I was working for this guy that was a real douchebag. Like you described that. When we talked about our weeks, you described that guy you saw like, yeah. railing on this kid. I had a boss that had the same attitude, but with everybody. And no matter what you did, it was wrong because it wasn't his way, and he fucking told you about yeah. it. And I'd had it with this guy, so I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm done. Like, And I actually went on – I went to Puerto Rico for a week. A friend of mine from college was living down there. He's actually still there now that I think about it. And I stayed with him. He had this apartment on the beach. It was like on the – 15th floor. Damn. He was look, like his apartment overlooked the city, not the beach side. Yeah. But all I'd do is go down and out the door and I'm fucking sitting At on the, the beach, beach, right? Yeah. So every day I would go, the, I would wake up, 
whatever the fuck I woke Where up. Where else would a white person live in Puerto Rico? Right, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> At the airport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would walk across the street to like the little uh, uh, store they had. I would buy myself a 12-pack of beer. I'd go three blocks down and buy a cigar, come back, and I'd go sit on the fucking beach all day. Yep. And I would just, by myself, I didn't fucking care. Like, I was done. I was checking Yeah, that ran by himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was his favorite vacation. Yeah, yeah that kids? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I, like, while I was there, it was, that was probably the only time in my life where I gave myself time to just fucking do nothing. To be you, yeah. And just Not chill. even to be me, no, but, no, to but just, just chill. To just, like, get lost in my own head. And I did it sitting on a beach looking at fucking blue water and the sun was out under mm-hmm. a goddamn palm tree. It sounds ridiculous, but no, I was able awesome. to do that, right? And, and I actually decided there that I was done with that particular job. So when I came back, I met with my boss and said, hey, listen, I've gotten some good experience. I'm done. I want yeah. to transition out and do something. And I did. And things went different directions for me from there. But that was one of those trips where I made every decision because that's what I wanted to do and that was it. Yeah. Right. Now, you busted my balls about the, the trip with Rayanne. Like, we've talked about that. We just decided we flew to Miami, got married, went on this cruise. It was a fucking blast. Yeah. And we came back and had a big party. And, and that was amazing for totally different reasons. But no, in yeah. this context, what we were talking about, like, people fucking dying. Things <laughs> right, <laughs> creatures dying in the ocean because there's no oxygen in the water. Like, yep. totally different circumstances. Like, I went someplace because I wanted to. It's great watching him try to score him out of this. <laughs> it really is, isn't it? It was really it's funny. Just, it was like in a totally different context. And then he brings up death in the Gulf yeah, of Mexico. Yeah, he's like, well, it couldn't be this bad. <laughs> That's right. Hey. hey. Craig hung out with your wife while you were 3,000 miles away. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And <laughs> and Craig also stared at, at your wife, his cousin's tits. That's no, fair. So. Remember that time? No. Yeah, you do. I did not. Yeah. I did not. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, neither one of us. Craig, I did not. Craig, in all fairness, neither one of us watched our children fly to the Magic Kingdom <laughs> without him. <laughs> He's not getting out of this. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. I yeah. didn't even get to watch. Nope. They just told me they left. Yep. <laughs> you were you were like three miles from the airport. Like, that that, that might be their plane. They probably that, flew over my house as they came back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had to have. I was in the, yeah, I'm in the yeah. landing pattern for that yeah. airport. Yeah. You were cutting your third terrace. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey Dad. While my wife was looking up trips to Puerto Rico. They were waving at you at eye level. Yeah. <laughs> I just high five them on the way yeah. by. Basically, just as they were coming, the landing gear lowered just as they passed over you, and yeah. it sounded just like you on a Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, hey, I miss Dad. Did you get his shot glass? Yeah. Make sure you don't take it out of its protective wrapper. You know what sucks? Up until five minutes ago, that was one of my better memories. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I hate Puerto Rico now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Craig, asshole. Why don't you tell us about one of your better vacation stories? I swear to God, if you say Disney, I'm coming across this table. You're not nope. walking out of here. That, it was one, but no, my favorite one was going to Vegas with my wife. All right. My wife, Francie. <laughs> we, we, went on, we went on a vacation together, and it was beautiful. Because I was with my wife. <laughs> Just to rub it in. <laughs> I want to let you know, my wife was my number one yeah. vacation story. <laughs> no, it was. We had so much fun. And uh, it was just, and we had been on vacations before that, but that one was just, it was our fifth anniversary. And yeah, because we got married. And then I was like, you know, before that, the, the, the cruise was my favorite vacation. And then <laughs> that we went on for our honeymoon. But then... <laughs> But then, then our fifth anniversary, we took this other vacation, and I was like, "This one tops that one." It was so much more fun. <laughs> and what's the common denominator? Yeah. You were always with your wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, but no, I'm sure being alone on the beach in Puerto yeah, Rico would no, have been no, great no. for I've you been, too. I've been alone in places before, and I just jerked <laughs> off. <laughs> I was alone once in yeah. New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, I was exactly. standing on a sand dune yeah. in New Jersey, screaming at the ocean because I drank myself stupid yeah. all day, yeah. getting my legs bitten alive by sand fleas, yeah. and I'm screaming, I'm sorry, universe, <laughs> at the ocean. <laughs> Because that was the only release I had, but it wasn't as good as Dave's 12 pack in yeah. a fucking sunset viewpoint yeah. of the world. Yeah. With, you know what's with, the worst part of this? 
I asked for this. You did. Yeah. I did. I decided I'm going to tell the story, knowing full well the two douchebags I'm yeah. sitting with. So whose fault? It's my fault. It's your this fault. This is my fault. Who's That's fault? why I'm sitting here silently whose taking fault it. fault really is That's it? That's right. Yeah. I'm just going to take it. I think no. next week's show should just be you and the mirror. Yeah. Okay. Because that's all I'll have left after Rayanne leaves with the kids. No, me and my wife going to Vegas on our fifth anniversary was a blast. We had so much fun. It was just it was just really cool. How long did you spend there? Five days. We did all five right. days. Now because I've... you can't do... Uh, no, we did seven days, actually. We were right, there for seven Vegas? days. Yeah. We so did, it's too we, long. No, we did a full week. Well, that's, that's right. That's why I was asking, because that... Brad's sentiment, I've heard from a lot of people that at some point, it's usually like the it's, three or four does, day mark. Yeah. You've kind of spent it in Vegas. You you can't do much. New more Orleans than that. is like that. New Orleans is like three days. Yeah. You're done. Um No, Vegas, we were there, but the, we kind of spread it out. We kind of hung out. We All just right. stayed in the room. We did, you know, a couple of days. We did this, we did that. Stay you in know. the room? Yeah, we we spent a day in the room just hanging out. We ordered in and we just watched movies and hung out. You had to go to just Vegas to, to do that? No, that was like in the middle of it. No, trust me. The day we arrived in Vegas, we came in on a on a flight. When we got there, it was like two in the morning. And they and have was, casinos in the airport. Yeah, there's there's machines like slots you can play in the airport, which I've won on. Yeah. <laughs> when we arrived, McCarran rules. When we arrived, because you you know we got there, it was like, no, it was, it was midnight when we got there. So we went from the airport to the hotel and we're like all right let's we'll put our bags away we'll go to sleep we'll wake up in the morning we'll just go but you have to walk through the hotel to get to your room yeah so as we're walking i mean you have to walk through the casino to get to your room sorry not the hotel yep so as we're walking through we're like this is fucking awesome yeah. <laughs> so like let's go drop our shit off and go back downstairs where'd you stay uh treasure island nice yep. fun and that's a it was very like gimmicky like they had the props which was awesome and the, even the rooms like the doors of the rooms were like pirate ship <laughs> no, it was kidding. awesome All right. it's yeah. a lot like pirates of the oh I'm sorry <sighs> yeah <laughs> you can just turn my mic so, off for yeah. the next 30 minutes so we we went in <laughs> and uh, we put our stuff down and we said alright let's go downstairs we'll have a drink we'll play a couple of games and we'll come back upstairs and go to bed it was like 5 in the morning I'm like alright we're going back to the, we're going to the hotel room right <laughs> so we go to the hotel room Fucking wrecked. Sleep. We get up at like eight in the morning, well, because we're like in Vegas, you know, and t the time change and shit, you know. So we're like, we're in Vegas. It's eight in the morning. Let's get up. Let's do this. Is that, are they two hours behind us, or is it three? three. They're on three. They're on yeah. Pacific time. Okay. <laughs> so we get up, and we go, uh, you know, take our showers, go have breakfast, and we start going. To, like I said, I want to put a, a fucking dollar in every machine. In every casino, that's what I told Fran. I said that's my goal, and so <laughs> we walked. Child. Oh no! That's so we walked down the entire strip, the new strip, not 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 old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like we an walked, old town. Yeah, we went. We Fremont. went. The, we did okay. go. We did go there and 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 do some stuff. But we walked, and I walked all the way down, and I did. I put five bucks, ten bucks here, ten bucks there, right, all the way down, but. Not in the first day, because right when we walked out of the hotel room, there was a guy in the corner selling daiquiris, <laughs> right? But yachter, like yeah. giant yachter daiquiris for yeah. five bucks. And it's hot. As soon as I walked out, I'm like, I need something ice cold to drink. The second you walk outside, I was like, God damn, it's so fucking hot out here. So eight in the morning, I'm drinking a fucking daiquiri, a three foot long daiquiri. And after I finished it, I was like, oh, we're going to go back to that daiquiri guy. I need another one. <laughs> <laughs> and he never moved. No. no. And we went back. And then next, it was about one in the afternoon. I'm like, we have to go to the hotel room. I'm fucking wasted. Like the whole strip is just moving. Like, like <laughs> everything, everything, I was fucking trashed. So we went back to the hotel. And we crashed for a little bit, and then we got up. And then the rest of the time, it was like, all right, I'm not doing that again. And we spent the whole week just having fun. We just went, and that, we did everything. We went to uh, the Hilton, where they had the Star Trek. Uh, like, um, not a ride, but it's more like a tour. And then they have a little ride and stuff, and we did all that shit. And it was what a lot of fun. What did you tour? No, they have, like, a lot of original sets from, from Star Trek and shit like that. And they had all these people, like... Dressed as Klingons coming on board. And so they had a bunch really of cool. like, Mexican dudes with goatees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pushing cardboard doors yeah. open and shut for you. Yeah. Okay. 
But after seven daiquiris at eight o'clock in the morning, it looks real. It looked real. All right. Yeah. I was convinced. <laughs> yeah. No. <Nah. laughs> Captain Hector Kirk. But yeah. we went, <laughs> and then we went to one of the, the the worst thing was we went to one of the the original was Circus Circus. Which was one of the original yeah. casinos. It's a fucking trailer park. Fucking it's a dump. I Come mean on. literally no, it's fucking disgusting. Is old, it really? Old, old Vegas is crazy. They got this Fremont Street experience that they do now. And is they that tra- Old Vegas? Yeah. That's, okay. And that, that's what used to be, I guess they call it the Strip. But it was like um, the Golden Nugget yeah. and the yeah. Stardust and all yep. those old hotels. Circus Circus was one of the last ones to come in on that Strip. Gotcha. And it's one of the only ones still remaining. Yeah. Okay. And so it was. A, that's when Vegas was transitioning. So there was a, a, a downtime. Nobody bothered to build Circus Circus back up. Okay. No, and so like like the Golden Nuggets redone. See now, and Binion's Horseshoe is redone. Yeah, yeah. Well, Binion's Horseshoe. Yeah. Is, now, and, and we ate in there, and the food was fucking incredible. I'm sure it was great. Good and it, it has to be if you want to stay relevant. Now, I've always known that there were two parts of Vegas. It was like the New Strip, yep. and there was like Old Vegas. Now, I I always assumed that Old Town was kind of like had more of an older feel. Like you'd walk it does. in. Like, you know, yeah, like, it does. I, I it imagine does, like, like old, like, like fucking good What you know they what I mean? did like was they old... covered the street. They they put this like awning over yeah. all of it, and uh, so okay. you you're outside, but you're not. And, and they project what, uh, they project stuff. There's onto like it. laser lights yeah. and all this, so you can go um, zip lining through it. Okay, you can do a lot of cool things, but it's still very much five dollar steaks. But and two dollar buffets. I, I imagine the places, the the casinos, the hotels being like not cheap or run down, but just like. Older, st- like no. going to your grandparents' house. It's still nice stuff. It's just older. Put it this you know way: I mean? every seat I sat down in, in, we were at Circus Circus because we went to that side of town. We're like, we're gonna be here for a little bit. We were in Circus Circus. There was cigarette burn holes in the seats. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh yeah. the carpet is just disgusting. I, it was gross. The, the best. It was gross. It was like though. being in a flea market. I was thinking like riding in the back of your truck. As if you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was like being in the back of my truck. Yes. It's exact. That was a fucking perfect analogy. It, that's exactly what it was like. But do you know what's crazy about Vegas is that in between old Vegas and new Vegas, in between the old strip and the new strip, there's actually these halfway house casinos. Yeah. They're literally run by like homeless people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and really? you go in there and they're just like 25 cent beers. And that's the, that's the sign. And you know, I didn't say no, and well, I went in there, and they're actually serving decent beer, <laughs> and they're giving you twenty-four ounce pours for twenty-five cents. Come on, places loaded with slot machines, and so you can just walk in there and play shitty slot machines. I won so much fucking money, but then I'm like, well, I've got a hundred dollars. There's a bunch of people here drinking twenty-five cent beers. Yeah, I laid that hundred right on the table. I said, everybody drinks yeah. all day, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and I'm saying, and I was, yeah. Yep. And everybody's going, and I realize everybody there has no home to go back to. <laughs> I'm the only guy with a roof over his head that evening. So, so you so, basically went grocery shopping for them for the day. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I am like the Pied Piper. <laughs> I, I drove all of the alcoholics. <laughs> but the best, the best part of my trip to Vegas was when we were leaving. Right when I bought, it, I bought the trip. You know, I said oh, I'm going to take her for I'm going to take her for the fifth anniversary. So I just bought the trip. It cost me like fifteen hundred bucks. Which was ridiculously cheap. Flights and hotel. Flight and hotel. Okay. Because but it's Vegas, so they're like, oh yeah, come here. They want yeah, you, they want yeah. to get you there. They want yeah, to get that makes you sense. There. So we went, and by by the time it was over, I spent like thirty five hundred bucks. You know okay. what I mean? Because, like I said, we were twenty seven hundred ga- on Hector Kirk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean we were, we were gambling and stuff, but a lot of the, a lot of your drinks are free. While you're gambling. gambling. While you're gambling. As long as you're playing, you're drinking. Yeah. 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 And we were playing, and everything was 25 cent machines, this. And we went a little bit, lose a little bit, lose, you know. And then when we were leaving that morning, we were getting ready to get in the taxi, and we had like an hour before our flight left before we get in the taxi. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to play some slot machines. We're still here. So I sat down, and I won $3,800. No shit. I won $100 more than the whole trip cost me. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> I, I went it, home with $100 more than, than the fucking whole thing cost and it, me. And if you do the math from the last two minutes of the show, you realize you won 300 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, I'm saying because I'm, like money I spent while we were there, we did a ton of shit. Adam's at home, like shit. He's gonna be on to me now. Yeah. <laughs> but that was cool. But then the other, my other favorite one was taking my niece to Disney World. <laughs> Motherfucker. And not, not not saying it to bust your balls. That was my other favorite trip. Yeah, that's a happy because, side effect. You because it yeah. was just it was just <laughs> taking you know a little kid to Disney World and seeing how happy they are and being. Right, the, you I'll know. play along. How how old was she when you brought her? Uh thirteen. All right. Was she still no? Into no, it? she was twelve. She was All twelve. Right. Was she still excited to go? Yes. All right, because that that age, Brad, you know, it was a prime age. That age. It was a prime age. Yeah. All right. Because well, because they they can, they don't want to hang out with you, but they kind of do. And then when you get to Disney World, they're like they understand what's going on and they kind of see. Because if you take someone that's like five, they're like, yeah, it's awesome. But then when they're twenty, they don't remember it. Yeah. They're like to, they have vague memories. To a five year old, it's just a place. It's, yeah. See, the one thing you never called me on is I've never taken my kids to Disney World. But I also never had an ex take them either. Yeah. So, <laughs> For those of you paying attention at home, this is the second roast they've done of me. Yeah. Dave's like, hey, kids, come on. We're going to Cranston. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, the we're, sunset's beautiful. This we're, is a zoo. We're going to Wallach. Santa's Village this summer. They're like, fucking Santa's not real. They're yeah. all mad at me. If it makes you feel better, my it doesn't. But my, go ahead. My first vacation was also not with my wife. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm trying. I'm trying to throw like an olive branch okay. here. I'll I'll wait. Go ahead. Let me wait for the punchline. An line. olive branch, like they have in Greece at Epcot Center. God. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm getting my own fucking beer. You guys keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I had so many more stories at the start of this conversation. You two can go fuck yourselves. Yeah, that's right. Well, my, my best trip, I can tell you right now. I, I'll throw it right out there. I, I took, my dad did a business trip. He ran, he decided to run his business conference on a cruise ship out of LA throughout Mexico. And nice. I keep talking about that love boat trip I took. That was yeah, it. My was dad had a business trip, but they booked it on the fucking love boat. And it was awesome. fantastic. <laughs> but before that, we did a week in California. We did San Francisco and we drove down the coast. Okay. That's and awesome. I found my favorite city in the world is Carmel, California. Former mayor of Carmel, California, the one and only Clint Eastwood. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's yeah. Right. But yep. let me tell you, that's where Pebble Beach Golf Course is. That's where everything. Oh. I've never seen a more beautiful place in the world. And then we drove further down the coast and we stopped in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz, there's a reason they named skateboards and surfboards after this place. Because these kids are literally putting their surfboards next to their lockers. And in between periods are going surfing. No yeah. shit. The high schools. Remember like Daniel's son? Yeah. He had that outdoor locker thing and all those California schools. That, yeah. That happens. That's real? That's real. Fuck. Yeah. Okay. These high schools have outdoor lockers because wow. it never rains there. No. And yeah. these kids go surfing in between periods. And wow. I was watching. We drove down US1 down the coast and we were going past Santa Cruz High School. And these kids are crossing the highway to go surfing. At like one in the afternoon, so they're still in school. This is like instead of eating lunch, they're like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go catch a, ten waves, yeah. and that's it, and that's it." You know? yeah, and then yeah. I'm gonna take my wetsuit off and go to math. Wow, and yep. it's fucking amazing. And it, I don't like California. I don't like the idea of living on a fault line yeah. and making Nevada beachfront <laughs> yeah. property. Yeah. You know, like I, I don't want that. Yep. But as far as visiting goes, it was great. And you know, also it was the I was 17 and I had a chance. And I'm not getting all like waxy here, but it was one of the few trips I had with my parents that was like really us being normal with each other. Doing like the family thing. But we weren't being father and son and mother and son. We were just we're being people out. on a trip. We hanging out. We had all seen it for the first time. And we really had a good time with it. You know, we ate Dungeness Crab in San Francisco and worked our way down the coast. We went to L.A. And we're eating in a diner in L.A. And I see an actor. His name is Ari Gross. You don't know his name. Look him up on IMDb. You know him from every 80s movie you've ever seen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I'm watching him in the booth next to me reading lines because he's going on an audition. Yeah. No, no shit. doubt that's what he's doing. He has since shown up in a thousand Law & Order episodes. Yeah. And a million, but at that time, this was like 1993, <clears throat> I'm watching yep. this guy try to resurrect his career and he's reading the lines. He's really intense. And we got up to pay the bill and I gave him a nod. 
and he gave me a nod. And it was just one of those cool moments because he's not famous, but he maybe should be. Yeah. And he's done some roles that you know. And it was really cool. Then we got on a cruise and we went down to Mexico and we found out that American Mexico is really fucked up. <laughs> yeah. And that real Mexico is crazy Way fucked, fucked up. fucked up. And, and, <laughs> yeah. But, and then maybe they were the ones that were responsible for what's going on in the Gulf. And that's why, you know, we're going to give free education to algae that came in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and those are my my worst vacation I've already talked about it on this show but I'm going to say it again for the new guys I went on a ski trip we drove from Washington D.C. to Santa well, Fe, New start, Mexico you started it with ski trip it's not a vacation you're cold <laughs> no no but hold so on so you drove cross country we drove cross country three cars caravanning from Washington D.C. just outside all the way to Santa Fe, New Mexico and I'm dating a girl at the time and the guy that she ended up marrying is also on the trip with us. <laughs> and then I found out why. Yeah. Because I'm on a ski lift and I'm looking down and I'm watching her ski basically hand in hand with him. Oh. And not only. But they, were, but they were in a booth. She was just skiing. <laughs> <laughs> it, looked like she, it looked like she was skiing. This girl had already cheated on me once with this guy. Oh. She already ruined a Halloween party for me. And that was also discussed on this show. Basically, kick me in the dick. I should have known then. But I decided, no, let's go cross country. That'd be a great idea. I'm out there and I'm looking for flights home because I'm like, I just watched you oh from a ski. I can't even God. yell at you. You're not hearing me from here. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of it, I've got to now take my ski and go all the way down yeah. the hill <laughs> to just, get, just so, to get into a fight with you. I'm so mad. I got to get there. I got to get there. And it's like there's a black diamond section, so it's, like, getting, it's getting really intense. Mo moguls and shit. Just get that. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of tabletops. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I thought about it. Caught air. Yeah. I got so much air. It was ridiculous. It was like Johnny Mosley. <laughs> I'm just fucking careening down this hill. And then we get there. I'm like, you got anything to say to me? No, why? We're, hey, we're going to go back into my house and we're going to get Frito pie. <laughs> Because that's a delicacy in New Mexico. Oh, yeah. Sure it is. And so that was it. And that was also the trip where I ran into Julia Roberts. She was the nicest woman to me on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> and she was awful. Brad fed her orange juice. She was <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't cheat on me. Yeah. Nope. She didn't oh cheat on me. God. So that was my worst trip. And that's it. But I, you know what? At least she married the guy. Yeah. It I almost just the ends justify yeah. the means. Yeah, in a sense. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I, I'm like, you know what? They were meant to be together, and yeah. I'm cool with it. She's not a bad kid. She's no, really not a bad person. It. But why date me? Yeah. yeah and act why? like I'm annoying you, because I'm learning how to ski on this trip on top of everything else. I'm not a good skier at this point. Yeah. I learned to be one. And like, it, Just to chase her down the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like rocketing. <laughs> 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 Cross, cross, skid. Like, oh yeah, no, no, th there was none of that cross stop yeah. thing going on. No, I'm, I'm, my skis are parallel. Yeah. And I'm getting down that hill by the grace of God. We're it's taking those, down Julia those Roberts. Snow plowing down in the bottom of the thing, like Clark Griswold and fucking <laughs> yeah. Christmas, and Christmas vacation. <laughs> Later, dudes. Well, that's yeah. the only difference. She ended up with the Walmart. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Oh yep. my God. She, she had a target right here. Uh, right. <laughs> and uh, I'm not talking old target. I'm talking like new redesigned target. <laughs> like they got around here. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, they, she, she had a the Kmart where the K stands for quality. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. That's how Craig would spell it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right? All right. So you had a bad experience out in New Mexico, the Southwest. Yes. Yeah. Skiing of all things. Yes. It wasn't because of blue meth. No. <laughs> <laughs> a mere 90 minutes yeah, yeah. north of blue meth. <laughs> and that would have made the trip so much more tolerable. Yeah, right. <laughs> Say my name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hovered over her that night. I'm like, you cheated on me. I am the danger. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never heard anyone say, I wish I had drug-induced heart failure over the yeah. vacation. <laughs> I did name my dick. Everybody, most... in, everybody in the Dominican Republic is saying it. <laughs> I was going to say, I named my dick Los Poyos Hermanos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, my God. All right, so that was my worst vacation. Yeah. You know what? I, I jumped the gun, and I, I kind of talked about my worst vacation. But, you know, you know, let me be the pivot point here. Dave, what was your worst vacation? My, I don't have – an entire trip doesn't stand out, but I did have an interesting experience in the Southwest, coincidentally. Shit, your, shit yourself in the heat? No, no, no. no. <laughs> no that's, 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 if this show goes any longer, it's going to happen tonight. Um, no, my family and I was on a vac- we were on a vacation. Um, Not in Disney World. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, you're playing softballs with I, the yeah. balls. You know that, right? I don't. Uh, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Go on. So, yeah. When I was a child, no, I was with my family, my parents and my sister. We were out at the Grand Canyon. And we did a trip. We looked at a bunch of other monuments in that area. Yep. And we were out early one morning, and we decided to stop at a, a, a McDonald's out in fucking, I don't know where it was, middle of nowhere. Yeah. It's good that you're getting the taste so, of the local culture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, listen, when, when you're driving, and all you see is fucking desert. Anything looks good. And then yeah. fucking golden arches. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> but at the time, they were still selling pancakes. Remember they had their hotcakes and all that shit? Yeah. So we were excited. The fucking... McDonald's. It was a straight up mirage. It was just Indians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny. <laughs> peyote cakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> funny you say that, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you've heard the story. Now, we pull into this McDonald's and we don't go through the drive thru. This is a stop for us. Family's getting out. We're going to the bathroom. We're getting some food. Then we're heading yeah. back on the road. We walk in the doors. And it was like that scene from Animal House when they all walked into the black club. Like uh, the fucking yeah. record players skipped. Like <laughs> <laughs> We walked in. There was not one other person in there that looked like us. The entire McDonald's was full of Native Americans. Yeah. And they were not happy to see us. Now, my dad was a 22-year police veteran, four-year Air Force veteran. As soon as the, the door hadn't shut behind him and he knew, fuck, we're fu- yeah, like shit. We, we were to order fire water. We're a news story. <laughs> yeah. So my it, dad. It was bad when they ordered the big chief come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All their pancakes are made from cornmeal. Yeah. <laughs> um. So <laughs> the quarter of the land we used to own. Yeah. Come. <laughs> yeah. So you remember McDonald's has two sets of doors. Yeah. The doors to get into the little side foyer, and then the doors into the, the place. My dad gets through the second set of doors, and he's in. He sees what's going on inside, which is just normal life for these people that have been pissed yeah. off for 200 years. <laughs> At people like us. Yeah. He stops. We're stuck in the foyer, and what happens in his brain is, all right, we're three minutes away from getting mauled. Yeah. But we're already in the door. If we turn around and leave, <laughs> then we look back. We're down to two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what he does is he makes a move, like a forward on a basketball team. He pivots and cuts off the angle to the food counter so we can only go right to the bathroom. And he shuffles us with one hand, didn't look at us at all. He made eye contact with 43 Indians at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and he shoot us to the bathroom. <laughs> So we couldn't eat. We had to run to the bathroom, and we left through the fucking emergency exit door. <laughs> he did. My dad didn't stop to eat or pee. He stood guard outside the two bathrooms, yeah. and when we were done, he's not like, one, we didn't go one at a time. We grouped together out the emergency door and fucking left. He's like, you motherfuckers are getting right. scalped. He's, he's, we yeah, right. Well, he knows you can't shoot an arrow through plate glass, so they yeah. had to chase us outside. <laughs> <laughs> Now, <laughs> I, w- I was too young at the time to really know what happened. There was a totem pole happy meal yeah. waiting for you. <laughs> there was- yeah, they didn't have the golden arches. This one had the golden thunderbird out front. It wasn't like some guy on his peace pipe. Do 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 do. The drive thru was just a chimney with a bunch of smoke coming out of it. Dave threw his Big Mac fucking wrapper out the window. You guys started, <laughs> and you guys started crying. <laughs> 65 pairs of tears falling at the same time. 
<laughs> right after you eat the large fries, you're going to go to yeah. the sweat lodge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how fast a rental car station wagon can drive, but I know how fast one drove that day, and I've never seen it again. Now, I didn't appreciate the the gravity of that situation until I got older. Right, because yeah. at the time I was a kid, my sister and I like what the hell? Just Wait, what? Fucking on pancakes. and off the air every yeah. time your family left a vacation. I just want to hear holiday row. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I'm like that's kind of what it was like. But I will never you just ever wanted a happy meal. That's it. And that was it. That wasn't. There were no happy meals in that entire restaurant. They were all sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a cheeseburger cut in half, hatch it, right? Yeah. All, all they were selling was egg <laughs> like McTomahawkins. Yeah. Like, is it burgers in half? <laughs> oh, they have hashish browns. <laughs> Polka hot cakes. <laughs> oh, they call the drive through the trail of tears. Like, it's just... <laughs> So that whole vacation wasn't ruined. Just breakfast. Yeah, there you go. That's, <laughs> ruined by Indians. That's it. You were play, you played a legitimate game of Cowboys and Indians. I did. <laughs> <laughs> did. At a fucking McDonald's. At a McDonald's. As soon as Mexico. you walked out of there, we're like, we have burgers. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck is wrong with those white people? How <laughs> <laughs> the fuck get right out of here They like didn't that. commandeer the place. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they did. They We're did. taking it back. Yeah. We're taking it back. We're going to every Golden Arches and taking our land back. <laughs> it would work. That's it does, McStanding Elk doesn't have the same yeah. ring as McDonald's. <laughs> Chief Swami McCheese. <laughs> The Hamburglar was just a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> he had a tray full of land deeds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, Gr- okay. and Grimace was the face of everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> state of mind not a character <laughs> me smoking purple gumdrop <laughs> oh my god oh shit you know it's crazy though every week we, we have a random innocent celebrity yeah. that we target <laughs> this week we just took out all the names yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah really fuck like them yeah we just got unfollowed by Eric Estrada. <laughs> <laughs> and no one noticed. <laughs> as long as we're still followed by John. John, <laughs> yeah. John <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> you know, the guy's name is John Bacon. <laughs> we lost Ponch, but we got John. I, I feel good that we also still have Hutch. We have Hernando Kirk too, don't we? Whatever the fuck his name was. I'm pretty sure we're still followed by Oats. Well, we, yeah. <laughs> we had EJ on a couple of weeks ago, so I think that Huggy Bear is still involved. Yeah. <laughs> We've got cred. We need to get a Native American comedian yeah, yeah. here pronto pr- and retell this story. You said pronto. <laughs> This last 10 minutes is just us laughing. Yeah. <laughs> We're sorry. No. <laughs> They'll never hear it. No, they won't. Not this long in the episode. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so that was your worst vacation. Was, uh, yeah. Actually, the rest of the vacation was great. It was that one breakfast. It would have been great if your dad got everybody in the station where hi-ho, silver, away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh boy, just playing gunfire and shit. 
<laughs> launching cap guns in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys should have stayed there and exchanged stories about Bobby Brady eating yeah. hot dogs with that guy in the canyon. <laughs> They all started ge- they all hopped on their horses and chased you down the street. <laughs> <laughs> you I need a change to my order. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Burger King. You don't get it your way. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scalping it. I made the same joke earlier, but you're gonna have to get it. it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, my story doesn't have anything to do with Indians. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't think so. No. Please Actually, tell me there's a McDonald's in a strange well, land. Do you have I, <laughs> just a quick touch. I, there was a headline today. In, uh, India sent three warships into the Persian Gulf today. And they showed a picture of it. And all I could think, I looked at it, and then I thought there would be a whole bunch of sailors just hanging on this. <laughs> Just hold it on. Yeah. India sends two warships yeah. and 93,000 yeah. troops to pull. <laughs> That's all I was thinking. I was like, they all just hanging on the side of it. The things, the fucking warships painted in all primary colors. And it's got fuzzy bells and shit on it. They drop anchor as 45,000 snakes wrapped yeah. together, holding one heavy wicker basket. <laughs> I would love to serve on the SS Ganesh. Yeah. <laughs> the captain yells way anchor. The guy comes out with a fucking flute and just twiddles the snakes back <laughs> up to the boat. <laughs> How did we insult two types of Indians? <laughs> We've got them all. <laughs> We're worse than Christopher Columbus. <laughs> we have nailed every type of India imaginable. <laughs> We are the East India Deflating yeah. Company. <laughs> we are the worst people ever. All three warships are just going in circles because they have too many people on one side of the boat. <laughs> we had Chief Running Bear serving McNuggets. <laughs> and all of a sudden we're over and there's a warship coming out of the Indian Ocean surrounded by 93,000 troops. <laughs> It's like 14 square miles. It just stinks like curry. <laughs> There's one new smell for every arm on their god. <laughs> this is the worst episode we've ever done. And yet it's the best. That's coming up. This is all coming up. No, it's not. No way. <laughs> oh. We just made advertisements that told us how unedited we are. <laughs> This is unedited. We're putting, we're keeping this in. Oh my god! I'm pretty sure Ganesh will forgive us, as will Shiva or Shiva or whatever fucking name. I love that Craig just seamlessly went from all right, fuck these Indians too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make fun of people from Indiana yeah, now. Right? Let's do that. You fucking Hoosier horse. What's going on? How the fuck are we? You and your fucking corn and your basketball yeah. team that shot from between its legs. Fuck you guys. Gene Hackman was your coach. You're a bunch of assholes. Gene Hackman was your coach. <laughs> and then Bobby Knight who threw chairs at people. Kind of like people who don't have chairs on trains in India. Yeah. <laughs> or people who don't have land like don't at Indians in America. <laughs> Oh my god. So what was your worst vacation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. My mother sent me and my wife to Cape Cod. Right? We get a, we get a Christmas present. 
My mother gives me an entire weekend at this hotel in Cape Cod. Was it a oh. specific weekend or any weekend you wanted? No, it was it was a specific weekend. She was, was, was it during Indian summer? <laughs> <laughs> it was right after Christmas. When there's four people on Cape Cod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she sends a, she sends us there they were with natives. hopes. Yeah. <laughs> with hopes that we're she, we're coming back with grandchildren. Like that was her whole I know my This my is mother, your mother in law. No, this is your my mother? mom. Okay. She's a devious motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She was like, hey, I'm going to send you here with no condoms. <laughs> Wait a minute. She yeah. normally gave you condoms? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> what kind of vacations was she buying for you beforehand? She was like, she, she was hoping that like, was going to kick it off. Like, all of a sudden, we were just going to start spitting out babies. Like, <laughs> my mother's you, insane. You know what gets people going? The ocean in the middle of winter. Let's yeah. send them to Cape Cod. That, right. So we and get not there. having anyone around. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing else to do. <laughs> so we get there. The room's got a hot tub in it. Was which it shaped cool. like a heart? Please tell me it's shaped uh, like a heart. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And the best part was, Fran's like, "I'm not going to that thing. It's gross." I'm like, "I'm going in it." <laughs> I'm like, "It's a fucking hot tub." Like, and the bubbles going 100 miles an hour. I'm like, "Yeah, this is that's awesome. good for your sperm count. Yeah. Keep it up." And, <laughs> and the best was. On the drive there, it started snowing like a motherfucker. And we get there, and now I'm in the hot tub. Fran's watching TV in the middle, because we can't go anywhere, because it's literally whiteout conditions outside. Yeah, there's not many services out there. Yeah, so we're hanging out, and Fran falls asleep at like 8.30. (laughs) So I stay up and watch the um, Patriots actually take their first. that That was the kick. Oh, from, it was that game. Yeah, it was that 2001. game. 2001. 2001. All right. It was the kick. In the, mi- in the middle <laughs> the of the... In the mis- it was way worse on the Cape Cod. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that It was It, it was, was even fucking worse insane. in your pants right yeah. now. <laughs> it was fucking insane. You were just hard-boiling eggs while yeah. you sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday row. <laughs> Right? Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what I was doing, <laughs> and it was fucking brutal. And then it it was fucking insane. So the next day we wake up and I look out the window. I'm like, we can't fucking leave. <laughs> <laughs> like this is fucking insane. We gotta stay here another night. <laughs> like, <laughs> so we stayed another night. Fran fell asleep at eight o'clock. <laughs> You kept cooking. I, I watched The Sopranos because <laughs> I spent 10 bucks to get HBO so I could watch it. <laughs> spent 20 At least you get a boner and start delivering yeah. on your mom's promise. <laughs> no. Jesus Christ. Spent 10 bucks. The poor hotel manager's kids outside like holding yeah, two wires yeah. together in the snow <laughs> so you can watch fucking Sopranos. You know it. <laughs> That's exactly how it was. But I watched it from the hot tub. <laughs> of course you did. Drinking a beer, smoking a butt in the hot tub, like, ah, like fucking, what do you call it, from fucking Scoffies. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is the best. Friends fucking snoring, because don't let her lie to you, she fucking snores. <laughs> Tony, not Tana. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, we're so fucking stupid. No, it was fucking horrible. That was the worst. And I don't fault my mother for, like, Pimping you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but it was just so funny. And we, me, me and my wife knew exactly where it was going. But it was just so funny. And of course, she shut you down. Uh, 8.30, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, no, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. It was nothing different. Like, things weren't changing. We, just, we were in Cape Cod. That was the only that's different it. thing. <laughs> that was it. We were in Cape Cod. There was a hot tub. Oh, my God. God. So that sounds like a happy marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Let's talk about one that isn't. We need to do a roundup. Yes. We need to do the bright side. Yeah. This week, this is completely off topic from what we've talked about. Then again, I'm not really sure we had one. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm, I, I think Native Americans. <laughs> and then people from Bangladesh. I, I don't really know. Um. Anyway, we need to do a bright side. OJ Simpson this week. We found out he launched a Twitter account. Yes. 
<laughs> he launched it big though. Well, yeah, he, he didn't fuck around. He, yeah, he didn't mess around. It, the, the tagline on the page is if it's not here, I didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that might have buried him early. <laughs> yeah, the, it, it, he immediately locked it right in. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. Uh, you know, in addition to writing a book called "This Is How I Would Have Done It," a mere few years after <laughs> yeah. he got released, uh, O.J. Simpson's Twitter account threatens a man with knife emojis, <laughs> like a thousand of them. Yeah, he, it was just constant. And then one of them was "Your Next." Yeah, he, he said "Your Next." That's amazing. Well, you know, I think we all have to give him a. A little bit of props for taking a stab at it. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's give it. A, he did send that to OJ killed his. Was it OJ killed his wife? Was that? The, oh yeah, he's got there. There was a parody account called OJ killed his wife. Yeah. <laughs> he's totally guilty. Dot com or something yeah. like that. Right, I'm pretty sure that's how Dave yeah, would have announced it. <laughs> so, so in this case, OJ was hashtag premeditated with his yeah. attack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just think it's great he's got Twitter because Kato Kalin's living in his subtweets right now. <laughs> I'm just, I just think it's nice that at his age, he's finally, he's like keeping up with technology. I agree. So that's cool. He found those knife emojis immediately. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I just think it's great if he comes up with some Godzilla emojis for the Judge Ito's old account. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And it's good that he's on Twitter because stab you in the Facebook would have been too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I, th- I mean, the good thing is he looks good in orange. <laughs> <laughs> what would he have tweeted? I think that's the funny thing. If, like, if you're OJ, what are you tweeting right now? Spent the day with the kids. Hashtag cut your mother's head off in the foyer. <laughs> Very popular hashtag. Yeah. It's, it's like follow Friday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had, I'll show you what hurts. Hashtag flashback. <laughs> I think it'd be fun if you just started arguing with people and every time he finished, he'd be like, hashtag, let's put a finer point on it. <laughs> <laughs> I had the LAPD followed my account, but slowly. <laughs> At Columbia Necktie Company, I'd gladly be a spokesperson. <laughs> Who wants to play fuck, marry, kill? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag new hybrid Bronco runs for days. <laughs> <laughs> well, off to at Coles for some new leather gloves. <laughs> at Coles. <laughs> at Coles. Not at Cowlings. <laughs> at Coles. I said my wife gave the best head. You can only afford Coles <laughs> I said my wife gave the best head once. I think it'd be interesting if he's trying to subscribe to the Casey Anthony Parenting Hour podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. He and AC are opening their own version of Uber. Hashtag slow but steady. (laughs) Nice. I like that. I would totally do that. Considering how early I leave for the airport, I'm all for I give myself three and a half hours of lead time to go to Providence Airport. I think you should just hashtag, you should buy all my Johnny cock rings. (laughs) (laughs) Look at OJ. Get off Twitter. Yeah. I got to give it to OJ. He's got balls. He does. I give it to OJ. He's got balls, just like our president. He's on Twitter. And basically, if you don't belong on Twitter, get the fuck off Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and we should probably get off the radio. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that, too. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a Native American Columbus Day protest right outside my garage <laughs> by tomorrow. <laughs> You'll hear the horse hooves coming for days. Yeah, well, they're, time to leave. they're going to try to hang Dave in effigy, but it's not going to be able to leave the ground. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to have to drag me in effigy. I think it goes without saying that we're putting a pin in this one, yeah. boys. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're going to scout them. Oh, wait, somebody already did. <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually just his ass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
A little housekeeping? <laughs> yeah, let's wrap this up. You can reach our attorneys at... No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Find us on social media and tell us all the things we did wrong at, at NTS underscore podcast.com. I know Dave lied to you a few weeks ago, but none of you saw that video anyway, no, so we're didn't. all good. Uh, that includes Instagram. Get us on Instagram. That's probably the best way to get a hold of us at this point. We're not really focusing on Twitter so much because everybody on Twitter are people we already like. So we're going to focus more on the people we haven't met yet. And I think that's a, probably a good approach. Um, other than that, T-shirts are coming. I know we've said it before. We'll say it again. But they are coming. Uh, I know that a lot of you have asked, believe it or not, yeah. where did the T-shirt site go? Uh, don't put your money there. I'm pretty sure it's down now. It, yeah, it, it's last down. week it's there down. was. If you have cookies enabled, it might still be showing this. But clear your cash, folks. It's good for you and it's good for your colon. That finally. I, I, uh, <laughs> uh, other than that, I've got nothing else except that we've got a uh, guest coming in next week. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good. Barring time. barring emergency, I'd like to welcome the the, the oft mentioned, never met Wayne. Yes. Okay, we're going to get Wayne in here next week, and we're going to sit down. We're going to do a show with Wayne, and he's going to sit in that fourth chair that goes otherwise unoccupied. Yep. This was a sloppy night. It was a fucking funny night. It yeah, was. it was. All right, gentlemen, in the middle. I, I'd like us all to do it on unison. One, two, three. There we go. Needless, Needless to say, say we, we said it. it.